Hello everyone, and uh, what we're going to be doing in this particular video is just we're going to take a moment or two to uh, actually uh, see how we can make compound objects uh, in three different ways. Now one method is going to be a little review, and the other two are going to be completely new and different methods. So uh, we talked about last time on how we could take in an object like what we have over here and potentially uh, make it so that it can combine with another area. Uh, so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to actually make a small little incision uh, in here from this box over here to this box over here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little easier. And what we're going to do here is we're going to actually take a moment to uh, make ourselves a line in this. Oop, before actually doing this, make sure that you select your object first like this. Use the pen tool and you're going to need to add three points to this. So basically I have my first point here, my second point here, and my third point here. Now what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to select the middle of those three points and hit the delete key. And as you'll see, you're going to make yourself a little opening like so. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And again, it's important that you get all three points when you're doing this. If you just get like one and then two, and then just try to delete it this way, you might accidentally delete more than you bargained for, like what you're seeing over here. Or if I selected this one, I would select, I would probably delete more than I bargained for. So I'm going to start the whole process one more time so you can see it. Basically, for my area, wherever you want to make a hole, you use your pen tool, select where you want the hole to start, where you want the hole to end, and then a little area in the middle. Then use your direct selection tool to delete that section. Cool. Now, if I want to combine both these objects together and simultaneously combine them with the strokes, well, this is what you do. You select both the different shapes at the same time. Then you go to Object. And then you should see an option for Path and then Join. So this is stuff we've seen before. Big difference here, though, is we are taking these two areas and joining them together like this. And as you can see, the stroke down here lines up with the stroke up here. Now, some cases it might not line up with the stroke perfectly, so you might ha have to, sh to move your shape a little bit. But in this case, we got lucky. And then we're going to do it a second time. Going to go to Edit, oh, sorry, not Edit, Object, Path, Join, and then we have our second stroke over here. So if you need to see that again, rewind this video. Otherwise, this is pretty much the way that you could approach it, similar to what we've seen before. So nice and simple. Not so nice and simple, although the, actual, the next one is not that bad, is uh, what we have here. Now, in this case, we have four different shapes, all different uh, colors and everything else like that. And what we're going to do in this case is we are going to make ourselves another shape and uh, this shape is what's going to be called a clipping mask. The simplest way to describe this is think of like a little cookie cutter and the dough would be our different shapes over here. So um, I'm going to actually make myself a, an ellipse. I'm going to click and drag from the upper right to the lower left. Try to get down here as much as I can. And yeah, whatever you want the cookie cutter to be in a sense, that would be the last thing you select. And then you click and drag everything at the same time. Now, once again, whatever is the cookie cutter should be at the topmost slayer when you're doing this. So if I was to go into my object, clipping mask, and choose the make option over here, it basically took this little area that we have and uh, basically made this little design that you see. So it's kind of neat because it would allow you to make some very distinct and unique designs and then make this little cookie cutter that you see here to adjust or change whatever is necessary or just basically have it a little bit more focused like we see over here. Now, if necessary, if you do need to do this, you can uh, still make changes. All you would need to do is go to the layer of choice and see what you need to select. Or you could just use the 
white arrow and the anchor points are still in play so that's actually kind of helpful yeah, so if you're not satisfied with the look this is a simple way you can adjust and change it yeah, that's not so bad <laughs> but again if you're not satisfied with this at all uh, or you just don't like the design you can always go to object clippy mask and hit release instead and it basically brings everything semi back to normal and here's the original circle i'm just going to yeah when you delete make sure that it, that's whatever the cookie cutter is is basically the only thing selected and uh, yeah just just choose whatever shape that you want and the shape also before i forget could also be a custom one like you see over here This should be interesting. Let's give it a look. So again, that's my last shape that I made. I'm clicking and dragging the whole shebang. Object. Going down your list. Make. And bam. So it really does make for some potentially interesting looking designs and colors and such. So yeah, give it a look. You might be able to make something that could be really impressive. So... With that, that's part number two. Now the one that's gonna be next is gonna be a little bit tricky, but and there is gonna be a part of this that will be, uh, we're gonna take a look at it more in class as well. Now, uh, for the next part that we need, we, we're not gonna actually see this normally around this area. So you're gonna to need to go to Window, and you're gonna to need to go to an area called Pathfinder. I'll leave this up for a sec. What the Pathfinder does is it basically allows you, the user, to uh, take two different shapes and uh, do multiple elements with it, or do multiple things with it. So it allows you to, to uh, either merge the areas together, kind of similar to what we did previously, although a little bit more, well, changes the object a little bit more. Uh, you can make holes with this. You can... Uh, divide this into multiple elements. We'll take a look at uh, the most pertinent ones for what everyone's gonna be doing. So once again, window, pathfinder. And let's just move this to the side. Now we're gonna focus on the ones that is gonna be the most useful for everyone. That's usually gonna be the shape modes that we have over here. Although, if we take a look at the two bottom pathfinders over here, specifically this one and this one, uh, those also have some very unique looks to it. Now, please keep in mind that whatever is the last thing made tends to have a little bit more priority. So, for example, um, for our first object, the Unite, if I select both these objects at the same time and hit Unite, you'll see that the color changes because the star was the element that was actually a little bit more forward. But if I change up the order and put the red ball on top of that, do the same thing, now it's red. So please keep in mind that whatever is the highest layer does have an effect on how the Pathfinder works. But again, the first one is relatively simple. You take the Unite, it basically makes the two shapes into one with whatever is the highest in the hierarchy that's over here, it takes that color. Now if you need to make something that's a little bit more of a cookie cutter, uh, in the sense of just making a quick little hole, uh, that's what the minus front and minus back can do. So in this case, if I was to, let's put this a little bit more in the center, and I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit. There we are. Select the, the whole thing, hit the minus front, and that's how you can make yourself a little hole. Now please bear in mind, it usually tends to work better on traditional geometry. Certain elements that might be other compound objects might have some difficulty with this. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're uh, putting holes in your stuff. Likewise, if I did the minus uh, back, this is kind of chipping ahead a little bit, but the minus back will basically take whatever's on the lowest part of the hierarchy, the red ball. Oop, you have to make sure you select them both. And make that the cutter of choice. So... 
Again, minus front, I'll just take a, show both of here. Minus front basically gets rid of whatever's on the highest most layer, make it a design like this. The minus back basically take what's ever the lowest part of the layer and gets rid of that part. In some cases, it could be a little overkill, but at least it gives you those options to make those adjustments and changes. Okay. Now, uh, the one that's in the middle, I'm not a big fan of this, but you might find a use for it. It's called Intersect. It basically takes the two objects, like so, and keeps whatever is intersecting between the two. So if I click the Intersect option here, it basically keeps whatever the two of these areas are selecting. So that could be useful. The last one is the Exclude. And what this will do is it'll basically take whatever's in the middle, lose this, but keep everything else. And when it's, once again, whatever's the highest part of this, basically they keep the color for that. Now the last one that I find that's actually pretty useful in this is what's called the divide. Now this actually is a bit of a combination of what we've seen for uh, basically the intersect and the exclude at the same time. Let me show you what I mean. If I was to ch choose the divide, it looks like it's uh, relatively similar to what we've seen previously, but check this out. If you were to select the direct select option, deselect and reselect any spot, you can see that not just one, not just two, but there's three different elements that you can adjust and change. So this actually does make this quite useful because again, it doesn't really get rid of anything. It just cuts everything apart. So this could be something that could be very useful or you might actually hate it. I'll leave this up to you to try out all the ones that I've shown up. Now, the other ones that are here, um, I gotta be honest, I'm not the biggest fans of these other ones, but you might be able to find some use for this. Uh, the trim, what that does is it gets rid of the stroke as you saw over here, but also if I click this, it also makes this little uh, cut that you see over here as well. But again, I'm not a big fan of the losing of stroke at that point. Uh, the merge, just gonna select them both at the same time. Uh, once again, takes both of the shapes. But again, if we select the white arrow and move this around, it kind of uh, merges them together like so. so not too much of a difference, at least in those cases. Now the crop, what this will do is it'll take both the shapes and crop it like this. The big difference though, unlike what we had up here, is in this case, it does it something similar to the intersect that we saw previously and, and also kind of keep the red element that you see over here. Also note that you're that uh, how the shapes are going to be working in this point, you might be find something. It might be something you could find that's useful for yourself. And uh, the last one here, not the biggest fan, but what this is is outline. And what this does is it keeps the outline for your shapes, but it makes the color whatever was the color of the original object. So that's why this area is in yellow. That's why this area is in red. And if we actually use the white arrow and select these sections. you'll notice that it basically splits it apart in these ways too. So I'm going to be honest, I almost never find a real use for the outline and some of these other ones as well. But all the shape modes, the pathfinder over here and the minus back, I've actually had to use time and again. Uh, so these ones can be quite useful for yourself. Also note that uh, as I was saying before, one of these elements have the potential of being used for a test. So please keep that in mind. So that was pretty much everything I really wanted to show on shapes. This one part of the lesson wasn't supposed to be too long. Uh, it's just showing how these basic uh, compound objects work. So hopefully you found something useful for this today. And again, I hope that you uh, enjoyed the lesson. And hopefully this will help with your homework and so on. So have a good night.